Sniffle, sniffle. All right. Next match is going to be LRM versus I F U. Sweet. And of course, congratulations uh, to FR for winning their first match of Gambit's Cup. Taking it 4 1. It's pretty sick. Do, do, do. So, LRM versus IFU. The first match is going to be LRM Infected versus IFU Cryo. Excuse me. So that is going to be a TVZ on Outsider. Good times. Here we go. All right. At the top right, as the purple Zerg, we have LRM infected. And at the left side, as the red Terran, we have IFU Cryoc. Now, this is actually quite favorable. Uh, matchup for IFU. Cryoc, as far as I know, is a uh, TBZ specialist. But having said that, he beat DeWalt once in Gambit's Cup and also beat um, some other Protoss, I can't remember who. But he's, he's won both the TVT, uh, sorry, TVPs he's played in, uh, in Gambit's Cup, and he also won a TVT against Gargoyle, aka Dima. So, man, I don't know what's going on, but Cryoc is on fire. I think he also got really far into the Defiler tournament recently. Um, I remember we were talking about it at some point. It might have been last week. Anyway, this guy, Cryoc, is actually pretty darn good. He's uh, one of the, the up-and-comers. And, and uh, Infected is pretty good as well, of course. He got pretty far in TLS. Um, I'm not sure how his EBT is. I think he was the one that did that crazy, like, mass Muta style that took out... or that took a game off Project, I think, but... Um, yeah, I guess we'll see. Outsider also lends itself to some pretty crazy things. So. <clears throat> Doop -doop -doo. It's like Overload scouting in the correct direction. Meanwhile, we've got drones. We've got drones, it's crazy! It's crazy! Alright, anyway. Uh, yeah, so LRM, by the way, is undefeated so far in Gambit's Cup. They are 3-0. Uh, and I believe they are tied for second. No, they're actually, I think they're just in third place. Or in second place. No, they're in third place. They're in third place overall in the rankings, so they're kind of uh, just in, barely in the playoff position. So top three make it to the playoff, go through to the playoffs out of the nine teams. But uh, IFU is just one point below them. So basically, whoever wins this match, so if, so if LRM wins this match, I think they'll be go move up to second place, depending on how well uh, the Net Wars team does. And if IFU beats LRM here, then they'll replace them in third and kind of take away their playoff spot. Now, of course, there's still uh, like four more weeks after this, uh, four more weeks of the regular season before playoffs, so you know a lot of things can change. But uh, that, that would be quite interesting if actually IFU can knock them down. IFU, I think, overall is 2-1. They only lost a SAS, and that one they even took it to ace match. So super, super solid team as well. In the meantime, we did, of course, have a 12 hatch versus what looks like a, yep, standard 1 Rex expand from Mr. Cryoc. So, uh, nothing out of the ordinary here so far. And it'll be interesting to see how this game goes. Um, the bank expansions, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm not sure uh, exactly how this affects like the mid and late game TVZ compared to like PVZ because of course PVZ you know th what this means is that you generally want to go Ser Reaver in the mid game in PVZ and for Zerg you know going for mass mutas is also pretty nice as well and all that good jazz and going for faster drops and all of those shenanigans whereas in TVZ I'd be quite curious to see what happens do -do, do -do -do. Of course, I think we have already seen a couple of TVZs on this map, but uh, from what I remember, like, the Zerg players didn't really take advantage of anything. They just kind of, you know, expanded to another main and just went for the center ex expos. Because you can kind of play like a normal map and ignore the outside ring expansions, although that's not exactly ideal. 
Anyway, so so far this is essentially a, a standard 3 hatch opening from Infected, except he's put his third hatchery at this uh, protected mineral only in his main. So he's playing it almost kind of like a electric circuit, except that that base is a lot further away from the actual main. I think it's completely fine. Meanwhile, this depot, by the way, is supposed to kind of make a wall with the command center, but it's not really, as you can see, um, the uh, formation of the natural here on outsider doesn't really let you do a really nice tight wall here. <clears throat> Might have been better to kind of put it. Well, I guess you can like emergency barracks here or something, or put a deep and a second depot to help block it off more. But you can see it doesn't quite block perfectly with the depot, but that's all right. Oh, there's like a couple links and a poke around. There's too many marines there though; they can't really do anything. And looks like we actually have a pretty quick factory here from Cryox, so he is up to no good. And a starport, yes indeed, a starport. Ooh, very, very interesting. I saw the, uh, I saw the gas, well, the gas earlier, but, I, but you know, fast gas in, in TBZ is usually just for a fast plus one, but in this case he has gone for a tech now. Um, still not too sure what this can be, or sorry, what this is going to be, rather, excuse me. Uh, you know, it could be drops, it could just be one port wraith. Could be mega fast science vessel. It'll be really, really fast. It could be Valkyries even. You never know. Which I think would be quite effective since it is a gonna be Spire. Three hatch Muta. And he's building. He's building an armory. It's gonna be Valkyries. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. It's gonna be. Oh my god. It's gonna be scouted. Oh shit. What happened? No, kill it! Don't let him scout it! Oh, he didn't scout it! Oh my god, he did not scout it. I'm not even sure if he saw the factory. He might have barely seen the factory, but it's it's pretty far away though. I don't think he saw the factory. Lynx don't actually have a huge vision radius. I mean, look, look, that's the vision radius of the Lynx. It doesn't actually go that far. Oh my god, pretty sure he didn't. Wow. Wow, check vision. Does that actually work? I always think the uh, the vision thing doesn't actually do a good job. All right. Oh, I guess I guess I can see here. Uh, maybe he saw it. I still I still can't tell. I just can't I can't tell. He definitely didn't see the starboard. Uh, I'm pretty sure he didn't see the factory. Anyway, uh, I mean he's going muted either way, so. Pretty sure that means he didn't see the Valkyries. Or rather doesn't expect them at least. And man, this is actually really smart because I mean, you know, you're basically never it, you're basically never gonna see 3 as Lurker on this map. I mean it's it's generally rare enough as it is in CVT. And especially on a map like Outsider, with the back expansions, you, you definitely want to be going for a Muta build. So going straight for the Valkyries is really, really smart. Oh a Ling got in there though, I think he saw the Valkyrie there, he definitely saw it with that Ling. He saw the first Valkyrie. Meanwhile, though, look at this. Uh, taking the double cast straight away um, with his with his fourth hatchery. So normally this would be placed like at a third base to get your third gas. But in this case, because he's already got this mineral base with his uh, macro hatchery, he can just take this double gas, and he has the same mineral income as he normally would from a standard three hatch opening. But he's got an additional gas. He's got four gas instead of three. So I really like this, uh, this expansion ordering of, of Infected. Just unfortunately for him that the Mutos are basically going to do nothing because of these Valkyries. Really, really good stuff from Cryoc. And it looks like going to move out with his Medic Marine as well. Looks like the time is now to put on some pressure on the Zerg. Emergency Sunkins on the way. A lot of Scourge actually. Got to be very, got to, uh, got to be very careful with those Valkyries. If they just get Scourged, then you just got a tiny little uh, Medic Marine Force just poking around. Oh man, got, really got to be careful not to let them get too far ahead. They are quite fast as you can see. Uh, I'm not sure actually, are they the same speed as Corsairs? They're probably slightly slower, but um, they're still pretty quick. Oh, oh, oh man, he's gotta be careful. The Valkyries are under attack. Oh, doesn't quite lose one. I don't know where the Scourge were. The Scourge were a little bit further back, but man, look at how bold he's being with the Valkyries. Oh, he's gotta keep them with the Medic Reinforce. Oh my god, he might lose all three of his Valkyries right here. Oh my god, he's gonna lose his Valkyries. Cryoc loses two of the Valkyries. Uh, Infected didn't actually split the Scourge properly, and one Valkyrie is miraculously able to survive here. Mass Sunkens to defend against a Medic Marine. I think uh, Infected will be able to defend this. He's getting a uh, plus one air carapace uh, to help against those Valkyries. 
And uh, in the meantime, so we got a second engineering bay. We got a second starport on the way as well. Two starports and only three barracks. This is actually pretty crazy. It's going to be a really small uh, medic reinforce, but I guess it's going to go for a lot of science vessels, actually. And this is sending an SCV down to go take that back in there only as well at the bottom left. Yeah, I, I think he knows he can't really bust this with only the four medics there against uh, the six sunkens. Of course, the, the rule of thumb is, you know, one medic per sunken. But generally, with the muters there, you probably want a couple of extra as well. Anyway, there's a scan in the main, gonna see uh, nothing too interesting. The Queen's Nest isn't- OH MY GOD HE'S GETTING BROODLING! What? Why is he getting broodling? This isn't mech! This is- oh god, please don't do that. Oh, oh man, Valkyrie, don't die. Alright. Wow, they Valkyrie actually have plus base uh, 2 armor there, I didn't actually know that. So they actually, they're actually pretty well armored. But um... Yeah, why- what? Why is he getting broodling? Is, I mean, there there may be tanks. There are going to be a couple of tanks, but that's that's generally something you just get when you're playing against Mech, and he clearly sees its bio here. So I don't know why he's doing that. I mean, you, you can't brutaling Valkyries. You can't you cannot you can't brutaling air units. So that's not going to work. It'd be quite funny if you could though. That should be amazing if you could brutaling air units. It'd be a bit imbo though, I think. Anyway. I mean, if he gets the few tanks that come out, it's it's not bad, but, you know, I mean, it's it's, it's a two-port focus here, so I don't think Krog's going to be overly worried about that. Uh, I am slightly concerned about his really low bit barracks count. He's just now adding his fourth barracks, uh, but still, oh, what's up, there's a drop in the back. There's a drop in the back, and only the Mutas can come back here, actually. There's only one Valkyrie left, but this could do a lot of damage. It looks like, oh, the Mutas going to run out the back, try and get a few more drones. They do get a few more drones with a lot of Mutas, though. It looks like they should be able to clean it up fairly easily. The Valkyrie gets scourged straight away, and wow. That got taken down easily. Oh man, the Queens actually popped out right there. I don't know if the Marines saw it. I don't think they did. Even if it was barely in vision range, I'm pretty sure that by that point, Krok wasn't looking here anymore. He just gave up that small medic Marine group. So I'm fairly certain that Krok hasn't seen them. But even if he has seen them, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, you know, you see Queens, you're like, oh, well, that's that's cute. You, you don't have to do anything too special to, uh, you know, to, to react to it. I mean, in the meantime, looks like having some slight issues with uh, his building layout here. And I don't know why he just loaded up that, that dropship. Where'd he go? Oh, he's dropped. Oh, he's lifting it to the other side. Ah, so we can get the gas as well. Very cute. And that actually makes a lot of sense because I was wondering, you know, he's already he's got the two port, uh, two port vessel going. He's also making some siege tanks, uh, which is really actually quite gas heavy to go. From. You can't really afford all three of those structures constantly producing if you're just on two gases. So he is actually going to go and land it on the other side and get the third gas base. So that's actually quite smart. But these queens actually might come in handy and uh, pick off the few siege tanks that are there. Still not entirely convinced about this investment, but uh, I guess we shall see. Meanwhile, it's like there's a good Muta Micro. Uh, now these, of course, do need 150 energy to uh, to do one Broodling, so uh, it will still take a little bit of time before they have that. Meanwhile, it's like Krag might think of just immediately taking another expansion here in the back. Uh, I don't know where that drop was gone, he's going to have to ferry a few more SCVs over. No, he's actually going for a double drop on the back expansion, attacking the, pressuring the front while also attacking the back. Look at this, he's forcing a lot of sunkens here. Uh, where is the Broodling? Looks like just 15 more energy on that one queen on the end, and we'll be able to Broodling that one tank here. There's one vessel uh, dangerously to the side here. Oh, you might see the, the queens, I'm not really sure, but there's the double drop. Going in the back, there's only a single sunken colony here, and it looks like the queens are actually moving down here, but what the heck are the queens going to do against Medic Marina? Are they just going to like Broodling the, uh, the medics or something? No, there's an ensnare, a huge ensnare! There, gets all of the Marines and the Mutas go in, but it's still too much. The Marines are still way too strong for the Mutas. Even though they have plus one carapace, the Marines are at 1-1. That was not a good idea. He revealed the Queens. He used the energy there and did absolutely nothing. Now he's moving back to the front. He does have enough for a Brutling. Now he can Brutling attack. He is going to Brutling the tank. Yes, there's a Brutling on the siege tank. Nice move there, but he's going to lose this back expansion. And in fact, he can't even run the units away anymore. Uh, meanwhile, Cryoc mining away happily here. He still doesn't have that many SCVs, of course, because he can't transfer through these minerals. But Cryoc is putting this, some serious hurt on Zerk. He actually also just luckily gets the uh, raise the queen that had uh, all the energy, but it looks like gets his vessel uh, scourged at the same time. Meanwhile, the, the Marines are just wreaking havoc here on the back. Oh my goodness! Muta's dying, drones dying, everything dying. The Zerglings can't get through the minerals. A plague! on the marines but there's no units to clean it up anyway here oh my god these marines they've been ensnared they've been plagued and they are just doing work here in the back these marines definitely deserve a medal unfortunately they're probably not gonna live to tell the tale but still beastly marines 
And what else do we have? We have an Ultra Cavern, we have a Greater Spire as well. Infected is actually banking a lot of gas here since he had that double gas still for a little while. But I mean, Cryok, he's getting a fourth base here at the protected uh, back expansion again. I mean, he's gonna be on a really nice, easy to hold four bases. Interestingly enough, uh, those few mutas, instead of suiciding on the marines, they could have easily come over here and counterattack and taken down both of these bases. So, uh, a bit of a mistake there for Cryon to, to just engage the marines like that. I guess he overestimated the, uh, the effect of the ensnare there. I mean, ensnare is nice, but still. Oh, another great play on the marines. Really, really nice. This army is actually surprisingly small here, although it uh, looks like uh, a few more reinforcements are joining up. Unfortunately, uh, Cryok is actually red, so the plague looks less, in uh, less impressive. But, man, look at this. Cryok is just a beast in TVZ. This guy is seriously good. Man, oh my god, he's actually really keeping on top of his macro as well, but oh, it looks like an ensnare, and with these marines already plagued, it might be enough, but no, more marines in the back. Is it gonna be enough? No, there's the Dark Swarm, so finally, this uh, this this Terran force has been dislodged from the front of the Zerg base. It was plaguing the Zerg for so, so long there, but look at this. There's the Irradiance going down. Gets the Mute, actually. It might be better to actually get the Queen. The Mutes aren't that useful, although... Oh, another good ensnare, man. Infected, really putting on a show. Oh my god, a double drop in the main base! A double drop in the main I looked on the minimap, I was like, what the hell is this big blob in the back? And there it is, he's gonna take out the gas, what's he gonna go after? No, he's gonna go after the pool, you might get it before Adrenal Glance finishes, he's gonna get some drones as well. Oh man, Infected just being pulled every which way here, there's a Dark Swarm, the spawning pool goes down, Adrenal Glance cracked, is not finished for the Zerg, means the Marines are gonna have to pull back, where they're actually gonna run around the side, a few Marines get plagued, but not that many, and they're getting a nice position here in the back of the mineral lines, the Zerglings not able to reach them. And wow, this is continuing to do damage here. Infected is on the ropes. He's mining with three drones here at the back. He's mining with nothing in the main base. He's only mining at his natural expansion right now. And it looks like, and at the same time, the Marines are breaking the front. There's no Defilers here anymore. He's breaking the front. Cryog is breaking through. There's going to be a Dark Swarm, but there's no units under the Swarm. It doesn't even matter. Infected is in serious trouble. He's finally cleaned up the main, but now his natural's in trouble. There's the ensnare, there's the Dark Swarm, so it looks like the Marines are going to have to pull back a little bit, but again, the 2-2 Marines are just so ridiculously strong, they don't even care. The Sunkins go down, the Hive might go down, no, he's going to pull back just for the time being, but look, this is the 4th CC, is up already, he's on 4 base against just 2 bases, mining essentially a Guardian, finally being morphed here, but... I mean, what is he going to do? Oh my god, he didn't even click the minerals, and now all the drones are just going to be idle there. Oh god, he's got three ultras. They Looks like they do actually have the carapace bonus, but getting taken down easy peasy by these 2-2 two -two marines. Oh man, look at that. No problem at all. Oh god, oh, okay, he clicked the minerals. But man, Cryoc, 154 supply against 57, and GG from Infected, Cryoc takes... Game number one. Damn, Cryok, man. This guy. This guy. Man, he's like the next Eon Zerg. Watch. In like, in three months, he's gonna win the next Eon